All right. If you haven't already read this question, I'm going to give you a chance to pause the video and read this question. Okay. Now that you've gotten a chance to read it, uh, I'm just going to quickly go over uh, what it's asking for just to make sure that we're on the same page. So let me figure out how to scroll. Okay. Okay. So basically, we have a timeline. And it's a timeline of bus stops. So we have a bus that's going around, doing all these stops. Starts at stop one, goes on to stop two, three, and goes on infinitely, you know, basically to infinity with the number of stops that it hits. But what we're trying to find out is some stop n in the middle and how many people are going to be on the bus when the bus leaves that stop n. So we know that people do one of two things. Oh, and by the way, at stop one, there aren't any people that are on the bus. So the, the bus stops empty, starts empty. Um, but people do one of two things in relation to this bus. Uh, people get on. And we know that people get on uh, with the rate that they're waiting there at. So they get on, the number of people that get on has a distribution that's Poisson with a rate of lambda. We also know that people get off. And this is another distribution that is binomial with the probability p. And the other parameter is just the number of people on the bus, which we uh, I'm going to just use the variable t to represent that. But I don't think that this is gonna that's gonna be important in our uh, or we'll need to really use the variable t again um, because what we're gonna do is have to think about r of n, which is the number of people on the bus when the bus leaves n. How can we break this down to make it uh, easier to measure the behavior that someone has and their probability of staying on the bus from state one, uh, two, three, all the way up to n, because that's when the people are getting on the bus, or they could get on the bus at uh, state n. Well, let's say that someone gets on the bus at state i, and they are at stop i, and we want to calculate the probability that they're going to still be on the bus at stop n. Well, we know that the number of stops from i to n is just n minus i. And we know that each stop that we hit, the probability that someone's going to stay on the bus is 1 minus p. So we know that we can model 1 minus p as the prob uh, to the n minus i as the probability that one person alone stays from state i to uh from state i to uh state n so that that makes sense because i mean well let's give the example where i is equal to two and n is equal to four i mean that, that's very small there's only one stop in between the two but i mean if you really think about it Probability that someone stays on from 2 to 3 is 1 minus p. Probability that someone stays on from 3 to 4 is 1 minus p. That is 1 minus p squared is the total probability of one person staying on from uh, that got on at 2 until they get to 4. All right, let me erase this. Basically, with that knowledge, um, we can break down. Well, here, here, let me give uh, one more variable. Let's say, well, now that we know that going from i to n, one person staying on uh, has the probability 1 minus p uh, to the n minus i, 
we know that 1 minus p to the n minus i describes one person. The probability of one person is going to stay. Sorry about that. Probably that one person is going to stay. But we know that there are going to be a Poisson distribution of, um, with a rate lambda, number of people getting on. So now, using this probability, well, I'm not going to say that's equal to p, but that's a probability. We know that that's a probability of someone staying. We know that the rate of people staying from i to n is going to be a Poisson distribution with lambda times that probability that they're staying. 1 minus p to the n minus i. All right. So basically, I have this typed out in a way that might be easier for you to understand. Um, where this variable, uh, this distribution is going to be labeled as, I won't scroll down all the way yet, this distribution is going to be described as r i to the n, which basically describes the number of passengers that got on at i and are still on at the end of state n, or the end of stop n. So we also know that if we take every single i up to n and sum all of those, that's going to be the total number of passengers at state n, or at stop n, um, when we leave. That's what we're doing here. And we know that that's going to be equal to r and n, because that's equal, because think about it. If you're starting, if you're summing every passenger that's gotten on up to point n, then that's going to be the number that are leaving on the bus, or that's gotten on and stayed on up to point n. That's going to be the number of people that are on the bus when you're leaving n. So that's just number of people on bus when leaving stop n. OK. So I hope that makes sense to you. Um, but it's really, you're just, I mean, going through and checking how many people stayed on at each stop and adding them all together until, until you get to, well, until you get to the end of stop n. So we already determined earlier that 1 minus p to the n minus i is equal to the probability that someone stays from i to p. And now we have this lambda 1 minus p um, to the n minus i is the distribution of ri of n. It's the distribution of the number of people that are on the bus when it leaves stop n who got on the bus at stop i. Now that we know that we've got, gotten to this point where we know what r sub i of n is, we can think about how Poisson distributions work. And if you're doing a sum of multiple Poisson distributions with different rates, so the sum over i, if you're, if you're doing a sum of multiple Poisson distributions, you know that as long as they're independent, the result of their sum will also be a Poisson distribution with a rate that's equal to the sum of the individual Poisson rates. So basically, our next step is just to take this variable and sum it for all um, this rate that we have here for uh, r i r sub i of n um, and sum it across all values from i equals 1 to i equals n, just kind of like we did up here, because then we can get uh, the Poisson distribution, the rate for the Poisson distribution uh, of r of n. So that's going to look like this. We're just taking what's right here and putting in a summation from i equals 1 to i equals n. Uh, we can pop out the lambda to the outside because it's a constant. And now we can, uh, knowing that this is a geometric series, um, uh, basically um, simplify this to 
1 minus 1 minus p to the n over 1 minus 1 minus p. If you don't understand how that step worked, um, you might want to look up uh, how, uh, what geometric series are and just uh, review some of that stuff back from Calc 2. But uh, this will simplify to lambda over p times 1 minus 1 minus p, uh, all this to the n. And we know that this is going to be the rate of r of n. So the answer to our problem is that r of n is a Poisson distribution with the rate that we just calculated.